Lord bless everyone. In today's program, I wish to talk about Christ's ascension, Christ going back to heaven. Um, it was something that Jesus spoke a lot about in John six sixty two. He says, "What then, if you shall see the Son of Man ascend where he was before?" In John seven thirty three, then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I will go to him who sent me. In John fourteen twenty eight, Jesus said, You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice, because I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. In John 16, verse 5, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, Where are you going? That's John 16, 5. And John 20, verse 17, Jesus said to her, to Mary Magdalene, Do not cling, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So we see by these verses alone that it was of importance that Jesus went back to his Father. The ascension is a very important event is just as important as the resurrection and the crucifixion. And we thank God that he ascended, because when he ascended on high, he gave power to the church. We're going to continue with this study in a brief, but let's go to a song break. Let's go to this song here. my servant, humble and weak. Reveal to me thy glory, for it is you alone I seek. Oh God, hide not thy face from my My God, you will not deny. 
Hallelujah. As we look at the ascension of Christ, we could think of some prophecies of the Old Testament. For example, Psalm 68, verse 18, which is mentioned in the New Testament. But let's first look at Psalm 68, verse 18. It says, You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. Now, if we look at this prophecy here in Isaiah 68, verse 18, we can see the fulfillment in Ephesians um, 4, verse 7, beginning. It says, But to each one of us, Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But first also that he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. And he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he, ga- and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastor teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ." till we all come to the unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. I want you to understand something. The ascension is very important, because if Jesus did not ascend to heaven, the Holy Spirit would have been given to us. And along with the Holy Spirit, the spiritual gifts. And we see some of them there mentioned uh, among those are apostles, pastors, evangelists. You see, the gifts were given at Jesus. It was given to the church at Jesus' ascension. It was a must that Jesus needed to ascend to heaven. It wasn't that, oh, if he, if he didn't, if he stood, well, it would have been better. No, he needed to go. Because Jesus in heaven was more useful for us than here on earth. While he was in earth, he was limited to one place. And now that he's in heaven, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Where there's two or three gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. Yes, he is God. He's everywhere. And even when when he was with his disciples on earth, he was still in heaven. Um, Jesus is omnipresent. But his body is not omnipresent. At least it's not, it was not till the resurrection. Um, we we know that Jesus is everywhere. John three thirteen, uh, we could read this, and this shows Jesus' deity. If anything, it says no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son. Notice that Jesus is in heaven while he was also on earth. This is amazing, anyway. Um, But Jesus needed, it was a must for him to to go to heaven so the church could benefit on the spiritual gifts. Anyway, um, we see Jesus saying to his disciples the following. um, Let's find... This. Hold on, give me just, let's go to another um, song break and then well, I'll look for this and I'll read it to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Ain't 
windows of leaves, the sounds of the birds in the treetops and eaves, peace in my spirit, the joy that you send. I wish that my time in the quiet would never In John 16, verse 7, Jesus says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Notice, the ascension was needful. For the helper, the Holy Spirit, to come. In John 16, verse 7. And he is the one that will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in Jesus. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler or the prince of this world is judged for spirit's sake. Just just like John the Baptist prepared the way for the Messiah to come, Jesus, our Messiah, our God in the flesh, prepared the way for the Holy Spirit to come. Oh, it was needful for the ascension to come. So the Holy Spirit will be sent upon us and 
we could behold God's presence dwelling in us. I just thank the Lord for everything he's done in our lives. I thank him for saving my soul. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Anyway, let's continue our study. And when we know is the fact that it is important. We saw Isaiah, we saw in the Psalm 68 verse 18, the prophecy. Also, if we look at Psalms 24 verse 7, it must be talking about the heavenly gates and the ascension has to be infer, in referred there when it says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And we know the king of glory to be Jesus. The ascension occurred 40 days after Jesus' resurrection. We read this in Acts 1, verse 3, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So for 40 days... Jesus presented himself to disciples, teaching them the things of God, teaching them so they could understand more more profoundly. And after those 40 days, Jesus ascended. We see that in Acts 1 verse 9, now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight. It must have events happen from the Mount of Olives. In Acts 1.12, we read, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And we read in Luke 24.50, it says, And he led them out as far as Bethany, And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. It was while he was blessing them, while he was blessing his disciples, that he was taken away from them, we read. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Notice what amazing fact is this. The ascension happened while Jesus was blessing his disciples and praying for them. He was putting his blessings upon the church. The ascension happened while Jesus was... The ascension is a very awesome event, and we're going to continue talking about this today. Um, It just, it leaves me breath, um, without breath, really, just thinking about the ascension And as I look up and I kind of see a bat fly by, um, I'm in my cousin's backyard as I am teaching the Word of God this early in the morning. Anyway, let's play another song while I get my notes ready and we'll continue this study. Hope you're enjoying it. Darkness of sin was a terrible stain Requiring the blood of an innocent slain The blood spilled on the altar of Abraham The mercy of God, not the blood of his son But the blood of a Blood on the doorposts of Israel gleamed, a nation. 
nation from bondage to freedom redeemed the blood placed on the doorposts by Moses command was the mercy of God for the firstborn son to accept the blood of a lamb blood of the Passover But now applied to the door of our hearts, deliverance to all who receive it imparts, for blood flowed from the body of the Holy One, by the mercy of God, not the blood of a lamb, but the blood of His. But the blood of his son, the precious blood of God's son. Hallelujah, Yeshua, the true lamb of Pesach. Hallelujah, Yeshua, the living Messiah. Hallelujah, Yeshua. Seha amiti shel Pesach. Hallelujah, Yeshua. Mashiach ha'achai. Hallelujah, Yeshua. The true Lamb of Pesach. Hallelujah. Yeshua, the living Messiah, hallelujah, Yeshua, say ha'amiti shel Pesach, hallelujah, Yeshua, Messiah ha'achai, Messiah Hallelujah, Yeshua, the true Lamb of Pesach. Hallelujah, Yeshua. The living Mashiach, Hallelujah, Yeshua. Seha amiti shel Pesach, Hallelujah, Yeshua. Mashiach ha'chai, Hallelujah, Yeshua. The true Lamb of Pesach. Hallelujah, Yeshua, the living Messiah. Hallelujah, Yeshua, Seha Amiti shall pass. Hallelujah, One of the other reasons why Jesus went up to heaven was to prepare a place for us. Jesus says in John 14, verse 2, In my Father's house are many mansions, or dwellings, in the Greek. If it were not so, I would have told you. Or would I have told you that I go? Or I would have told you, for I go. I go to prepare a place for you. No, as Jesus said, it it was a need that, that he went up to heaven. A need to ascend so he could prepare a place for his church. 
Think about it. It took six days to create the world that we see now. And it's amazing. I sometimes look at the stars, the moon. I look at the mountains. I look at the trees. I look at the, at the waters, the rivers, the lake, the oceans. As I am in Florida at this point, I'm, I'm looking at these areas and I, and I see the forests and so forth. I, I see beauty of nature. And it's an awe-inspiring thing. It's, it's amazing the beauty that this earth has, even though it's a fallen world. But there is lots of beauty in this world. And I see this world and I enjoy it. You know, there's, there's things to enjoy. And... It only took six days. Think about it. It's been 2,000 years. Jesus is preparing a dwelling place for us. He needed to ascend to prepare a dwelling place for us. That is amazing. And he also needed to ascend... For other reason as well, to intercede for us. Jesus at this point is interceding for us in heaven. Romans 8.34 Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and further it is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercessions for us. That's Romans 8.34 Hebrews 9, 12, copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Notice, he appeared in the presence of God for us. He is interceding for us, brothers and sisters. It was needful for him to ascend to heaven To intercede for us. And this is not just interceding for our salvation. Because that is that is God given. Are we going to be saved? If you are a true believer. Um, He probably had to intercede once for that. But he's interceding for your very life. Everything that's going on in your life. Oh, he's praying for you. He's interceding for you. Um... You may be going through a wrong situation, a, a sad situation in your life, a suffering, a, 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 a situation that might seem hopeless. And you're wondering, who is praying for me as I'm going through this? Well, I want you to understand, Jesus is praying for you. And you're going to pull through because Jesus is praying for you. He said to Peter, I'm praying for you. And Peter pulled through. And he told Peter, when you're strengthened, um, encourage um, the brethren. And guess what? If he intercedes for Peter and Peter made it through, he's he's interceding for you and you're going to make it through. Oh, brothers and sisters, the ascension of Christ is a very important event. And we, we're going to go to the book of Daniel in a brief. Um, let's go right now. Daniel 7. Let me find it here. Just hold on one second, brothers. Daniel 7, verse 13 and 14. We see this. It says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, languages that should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting, shall not be taken away, who shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. I want you to understand this. Uh, When Jesus left up, a cloud received them. 
No, it's Acts 1, verse 9. Now, when he has spoken these things, while well, they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. Jesus, in the ascension, received all power, authority. Oh, Jesus received all authority in the ascension. It's not just... That's another reason why Jesus needed to ascend. <clears throat> so he could rule with authority over everything that is here on earth. And sometimes you may see things that are out of your control, but they're not out of the control of an all-sovereign God, who is Jesus. Let's continue hearing some Christian music today as we meditate on Jesus' ascension to heaven. Let's listen to, to this one here. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess Yeshua who are your life. Dean and sleep, we have the victory. Yeshua is Lord. In that name, in that glorious name, our healing be sent victory. Praise the name that is above all names. Yeshua has set the captives free. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess Yeshua who are your So 
far and the dead and the sire will rise. The Lord himself will pull the show far and the dead and the sire will rise. I just can't wait for Jesus to blow that shofar, to blow that horn, and to pick up his church. Um, you know, it's like in this life, I feel like I have nothing to look forward to. But yet, in the life to come, I feel like I have a lot to look forward to. And the more that one feels loneliness, is, um, and one feels that only completeness is in Christ at this moment. <laughs> Um, since I don't have a wife at this point, I'm a widower <laughs> anyway. But um, let's look at um, Acts 1, verse 10 and 11. And I want us to just focus on something. Jesus' second coming will be just like Jesus' ascension. We read the following in Acts 1, verse 10 and 11. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner. So you saw him go into heaven. And I just want to close up the study at this point. Uh, there's lots of other things we could talk about the ascension. Um, there's lots of amazing little notes and details we could talk about this ascension. And it's so awesome. Anyway, but we're going to leave it here and we're going to go to our Bible reading time fellowship. And we're going to go today in Genesis chapter 20. And that's going to be a good reading. Genesis chapter 20. And let's prepare to listen to the word of God. Chapter 20. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, She is my sister? And she, even she herself, said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also with him. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning, and called all his servants, and told all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham, and said unto him, what hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me. At every place whither we shall come, say of me, He is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants, and gave them unto Abraham, and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. 
Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Let's listen to a song before we continue on our Bible reading um, fellowship. And let's listen to let's listen to another one. We've been listening lately to today. We've been listening to a number of uh, messianic songs. Um, forgot the name of the lady who sings it. I got to meet her. I think her name was Fern. And um, she's very ill at this point. So um, if you can, pray for her. Keep her in your prayers. Um, she gave me about two CDs of her songs. And I met her and her husband. And they're a great couple. Lord bless them. Husband, when I come back to Philly... And we'll be ministering in Philadelphia if God wills me to come back to Philadelphia. Um, the reason I say that because you never know what God can do. Anyway, let's go to a another song, but let's let's take a break from the messianic songs since we've been listening to them lately. Let's listen to "Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty." I love this song. I love this hymn.
Hallelujah. I love this hymn. I, I, I just love this hymn. It just, to praise the Trinity, it's an awesome hymn. God in three person. We, we have a blessed Trinity, God. Oh, God is so awesome. <laughs> anyway, let's go to our Bible reading fellowship and we got we're going to listen to Matthew chapter 20 in today's Bible, in the New Testament Bible Reading Fellowship. Matthew chapter 20. So pick up your Bible. Um, I, I believe this is the New Living Translation that's being read um, here at this point. Um, the New Testament, we read the New Living Translation. And the Old Testament, we are reading the King James Version. Version, I want to switch there. But till then, we're going to have... Um, uh, I forgot the name of the guy that reads it. Anyway, for, uh, but um, let's listen to Matthew chapter 20 in the New Living Translation. Matthew chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. At five o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, Why haven't you been working today? They replied, Because no one hired us. The landowner told them, Then go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, They assumed they would receive more, a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you paid us, who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered one of them, Friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen to him. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem, where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip, and crucified. But on the third day he will be raised from the dead. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons, She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request? he asked. She replied, In your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. Jesus told them, You will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My Father has prepared those places for the ones He has chosen. When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. But Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, 
and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. Instantly, they could see. Then they followed him. Hallelujah, what amazing words um, we read in Matthew chapter 20. And I just love having the Bible reading fellowship with you all. It's good to listen to the word of God. Um, now we're going to take a song break again, and then we'll be listening to um, Mr. Kakalidi's short story time. Right at this point, there's about 43 stories in total that I've written down, and you could choose which story you want to read in um, short Christian stories for you. I think that's what it's called, I I believe. Um, one of that has to do with my poems, which I have to add some more poems to it. And eventually I'm going to put more stories um, among the list. Um, the story that we're going to listen to now is going to be called words is called words of a clown but before we listen to it i want us to listen to another song and we're gonna go and listen to this one here a very short song but a very good one let's listen to jesus as i think of you jesus as i think of you i 
beautiful words um, we hear singing. Um, and thank you, Jesus. Um, and you are everything, O oh Lord. You are awesome. After our story, we'll be praying together before we close off. Let's go to our story. Words of a Clown. Chapter 22, Words of a Clown. (laughs) They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but sometimes a smile in a picture could be a frown in the inside. Even in laughter the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. Prov 1413 NKJV Words of a Clown Looking at my mirror I looked and saw a clown, which laughed and made everyone laugh who came in contact with him. There is one who has joy, one who sees him, they say. He knows how to laugh and make them laugh. As I continue to look and wipe the makeup away. When everyone left I took a picture from my pocket, and as I looked, I started to weep. One never knows what is behind everyone's mask. Only God and the one who wears it can tell. Like a clown many times we are wearing a mask. But thank God in his presence, there is room for a frown that waits for the morning to smile. Weeping may endure, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Peace 30 to 5 NKJV. And that the truth, uh, we may see somebody with a very joyful smile and maybe laughing and giggling, but they're just hiding something inside and who knows how they are they may be crying they may be suffering and only god knows how the person is and what they're going through but let's pray let's pray let's pray for everyone who's hearing this podcast um god knows your situation and let's unite in prayer for this um i want to (laughs) replace Uh, Mr. Cagliari speaks his mind for just prayer time, at least a minute or two of prayer time, and that's what we've been doing. And not to say that it won't come again, it's just I just haven't been listening to the news lately or reading the news. So I've just been uh, like, I don't care about the news at this point. Um, I was supposed to have my podcast at two, I couldn't sleep, so... I decided to do it earlier. Anyway, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you know um, those who are hearing this podcast at this moment, you know what they're going through. You know their hearts, Lord. You know their minds. You know what they're going through. I don't know. But you see inside men's heart where no one can see. And we pray, Lord God, that you will heal, that you will restore, that you will break every chain, every bond, every yoke that may be in their lives. Lord God, heal those who are sick, demons that may be attacking their minds or tormenting their thoughts. In Jesus' mighty name, If there's anyone that has not received you, we pray for their salvation. We pray that they may receive you today as their Savior. We pray, Lord God, that this podcast may be a blessing to everyone who listens to this podcast. We pray, Lord God, that you may use this podcast as a tool to restore, to change, to transform those who are hearing this podcast. And you may edify many people in Jesus' mighty name. And we just thank you. Lord God, reach into the hospitals, in the orphanage, in the elderly homes, in the prisons. And bring to you those who are yours and answer their needs. I pray, answer their needs, not their wants, Lord God, because many times we want things that are not according to your will, but yet our needs, Lord God, needs to always be answered. 
And we pray you do that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And as I leave you today, I just want to send you my blessings. As I always do. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And the Church of God says, Amen. So long, love you all, and I'll see you next program of Mr. Kakalides and the Bible Podcast. So long.